Hey, it's Jay. It's summer in Florida and our air conditioning's broken. What's going on? I I can't sleep. It's too hot in here. You're right. It does feel hot. I feel like the air conditioner should be on. The thermostat says 80, and it's set to 74. I think I have an idea of what it might be, so let's take a look inside. This is the furnace upstairs, which has the air handler. Yeah, <laughs> it's frozen solid. If your air conditioning's not working, there's a chance that your air conditioner is working overtime and it ends up accumulating ice on these coils. And if this is frozen, then you're not able to remove heat from your house. So as you can see, it was just a giant block of ice and I borrowed my wife's hair dryer and was able to use it to just really melt it down. At first I didn't have an extension cord, so you can see that the hairdryer is a little bit distance away, but um, it still worked very well. Um, the ice just melted away. Now what you're looking at is the evaporator coil. As air flows through it, the evaporator coil is cooled down, and that cooling process causes the water or any moisture in the air to condense on the evaporator coil. Once it condenses, it drips down into a pan and then flows out through a drip line. Now, in this case, there's such a big block of ice that the drip line was completely clogged, so uh, water couldn't flow anywhere. So what it did is backed up and then just built this massive layer of ice um, over the evaporating coil. The drip line, you may notice, it usually flows down outside of your house and then it goes down um, to where you're, near where your condenser unit is outside, the other part of your outside air conditioner. It's usually like a little PVC pipe that kind of curves like this, and then you can see it dripping a lot in the summertime. If you're curious, I did a, a, did a little segment a little while back on how an air conditioner works, and I'm gonna include it, that segment in this video in particular, so uh, stay tuned at the end to, to take a look to see how it works. Once we took care of the one side, I noticed that there was a huge sheet of ice underneath. That's probably where all the moisture was dripping down and it just condensed underneath the evaporating coil. So anyway, I got the, finally got an extension cord and got the hair dryer underneath and you can just see the, the ice just quickly disappear. This is just a video clip of me looking down into the drip line and you can see now that there's finally a flow of water. Um, this was completely dry when we started. We've got water flowing freely through the pipe. That means everything's pretty much unclogged. So we basically just finished thawing and then we fired up all the thermostats in the house and the air conditioning worked. How does central air conditioning work? Well, it all starts with a thermostat. You're hot, so you turn the temperature down. Electricity flows to a circuit board that turns on a fan in your condenser unit. And the electricity also travels to the blower inside your HVAC, or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning unit. This is the evaporator. The blower just to the right sucks air into the return. The air passes through the filter, capturing particulates, is cooled and dehumidified while it passes across the evaporator coil, and then is returned to your home through air conditioner vents. Very cold refrigerant is passed through your evaporator coils, which absorbs massive amounts of heat energy right out of the air. Because the coils are so cold, moisture in the air condenses on the evaporator, drips down to drain through the condensate line. The refrigerant cycling through the evaporator heats up and changes from a liquid to a vapor because it has a boiling point of approximately 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This warmed up refrigerant vapor carries the heat energy outside to the condenser unit where it's run through the compressor. Since the vapor is still colder than the air outside and we want to get rid of that heat energy, a compressor is used to pump that refrigerant into a smaller diameter pipe. If you remember the ideal gas law back from high school, PV equals NRT, when the pressure of the gas increases, so does the temperature. The refrigerant warms up to somewhere between 120 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer than the outside air, and is pushed through the condenser unit. The condenser unit is nothing more than a large heat sink that pulls out heat energy from the refrigerant, and a giant fan blows that heat energy up to the atmosphere. I made a video that explains the science of a heat sink if you want to check it out. The condenser cools the refrigerant enough to change it back to a cool liquid. 
This liquid flows back up to the evaporator, pushed through the line by a compressor, which acts like a pump or a heart. Before it reaches the evaporator though, one more extremely important thing happens. The refrigerant passes through an expansion valve that lowers the pressure around the refrigerant. This decreases the boiling point of the refrigerant, causing some of the liquid refrigerant to boil and turn into a vapor. Anytime a liquid changes to a gas, it requires a lot of energy. That energy has to come from somewhere, and in this case, it comes from the liquid refrigerant. When heat energy leaves the refrigerant, it becomes even colder before cycling through the evaporator. This cycle continues until your room is cooled down to the desired temperature. This is how an air conditioner works. It's just science. If this video helped, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel.